Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Bitcoin update. And unfortunately, we've seen massive downside price action, a 7% downwards move on Bitcoin in the last six or seven hours based on the ETFs, the spot applications being delayed, not, not declined, okay, not declined, but delayed. And the fact that we've seen even this, you know, massive downside price action on the delay means that these applications hold a lot of weight, okay, because if they were denied, you can imagine what the price action would be, it'd be negative 20%. And if they were approved, you can imagine what the upside price action will be. So they're delayed until mid-October. In mid-October, there'll be another decision based on, you know, uh, what the SEC approves, whether it's denied, whether it's uh, approved, whether it's delayed, we'll be giving you my opinion on that. I think personally, uh, they're looking pretty good based on the grayscale lawsuit, but that's another topic. And then we're also looking at the charts uh, and the charts, unfortunately, don't look too good. We've seen a very bad monthly candle close and we're in a very dangerous position for a weekly candle close. Uh, we're back in, you know, validating that head and shoulders pattern uh, that we've been seeing throughout the entirety of 2023. And we've got a death cross coming in for the first time in 21 months on Bitcoin. So not very good on the charts, but we'll be looking at all, all of this in the video. There are some redeeming qualities, but unfortunately, Bitcoin's not in a great position right now. And we have to show you exactly why. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, so the charts we'll be looking at today are the Bitcoin daily chart, looking into the move up and the move right back down, why that occurred, which is the ETF delays. We'll look into that quite extensively, actually. Uh, daily chart, uh, death cross incoming, rejection from bull market support band on the weekly chart, and the crucialness of that weekly candle close, uh, head and shoulders pattern, and that's the bear case. And then we'll look at the monthly chart from a few different perspectives as well. So that's what we're looking into. Before we do that, guys, check out the VIP group on Telegram. On VIP, we post trade signals like the one you can see on the screen now in five minute videos. We then have a VIP discussion group as well where you can discuss the trade signals, discuss anything that happens in cryptocurrency. There's been a lot of talk about uh, the ETF delays in the group chat uh, this morning, which has been quite informative. So if you want to get part of that group chat and also get part of the VIP community on Telegram in general with the trade signals, go ahead and check out the link below, which shows you everything you need to know about it, including the results, the information, payment, etc. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, what has occurred here? Well, first and foremost, let's just zoom in very closely to the short-term chart, ignore the green in the background, go to the 15-minute chart, we can see what's happened on Bitcoin in the last few days. Big move upwards, and by big, I don't mean, oh yeah, like big as in a few percent, I mean a 9% move to the upside in under 24 hours. In fact, in under six hours, we saw a 9% move to the upside, which is huge, right? Because if you think about, putting it in perspective, the S&P 500 average returns per year is 8%, so a 9% move in six hours is massive, and then we saw the exact same situation, okay, a 9% or 7% move to the downside in around the same period of time. So big move up, big move down. Why did it occur? Well, the big move upwards occurred because Grayscale won their lawsuit against the SEC, okay, and that lawsuit was basically saying that the rejection of their ETF application was unjustified. They won that lawsuit. Now, you have to remember, that's good for Bitcoin price. Fundamentals is a different story. Bitcoin price, that's very good, okay? And that's why we went upwards because that actually not only, you know, led to a short-term pump, but it paves the way for further Bitcoin application approvals. Before this occurred, before the SEC lost the uh, case against Grayscale for unjustifiably rejecting their application, it was pretty much... Uh, a common sense, you know, consensus amongst cryptocurrency, uh, you know, people in the market that they would reject all applications. But now that they've been, you know, deemed unjustified to reject that ETF application, it now stands to reason that we will be seeing ETFs approved, which means we will be seeing large upside price action. How can we know we're going to see large upside price action because of that? Well, it's quite simple. When the ETFs have been delayed, which has happened today, okay, all ETFs have been delayed. We'll look into this article in a second. We've seen large downside price action. So it stands to reason that when they're improved, we're going to be seeing large upside price action. Now, this is delayed. This isn't even rejected. If the ETFs were rejected, we would be seeing much larger downside price action than this, but they've been delayed. When have they been de delayed to? This is where we get into the article. They've been delayed until October. So what we've seen is the SEC delaying all of the ETF applications from BlackRock, from Wisdom Tree, from Esco Galaxy, from Rise Origin, from Vanek, from Bitwise, from Valkyrie. You know, this is from six separate applications. In fact, seven separate applications. Okay, we've seen them reject all of them. Okay, no, sorry, delay all of them. Okay, if they were rejected, they're all rejected, which is was a very strong possibility up until last week. Okay. If they were rejected, we would have seen massively downside price action, a huge 
uh, dumps on Bitcoin. One of the reasons Bitcoin has had such strength uh, in maintaining this price region in this green box was because of the ETF uh, rumors and the, not the rumors, but the ETF kind of speculation. Look, I'll say that again, right? Because it's very important you note this. The three move upwards we saw, they were all very natural, okay? The two legs upwards were very natural. The large, you know, massively huge, long lasting six months of consolidation of the same price region that we've seen in this green box between 24.2K and 32K has largely been between, uh, been because of the fact that ETFs have been on the horizon and people haven't been willing to sell their Bitcoin with such potentially massive news on the horizon. That's why people have been holding. That's why volatility has been so low. That's why we've seen, okay, Bitcoin long-term holders reaching new highs. As per this chart here, you can see a spike in the long-term holding supply of Bitcoin right around the time we entered this green price region. Why did that occur? As I said, it occurred because that was around the time that these spot ETF applications started really picking up traction in the news. So now that we've seen all these uh, applications being delayed, now with that said, right, they've only been delayed until October. They've only been delayed about a month. So we won't have to wait very long uh, to see them potentially approved. October 17th is when a lot of them are coming through. So about a month and a half, you know, so about, about a month and a half from now, we'll see these applications be either approved or rejected. I don't see why they would be rejected at this point in time. And the reason why I don't see why they would be rejected is because how would Grayscale have won their lawsuit against the SEC for the SEC unjustifiably rejecting the Bitcoin spot ETF if they're just going to go ahead and reject all of them. It doesn't really make sense. It doesn't seem like they have the grounds to do that. You also have to note that BlackRock, which is one of the uh, applicants, and by the way, the biggest applicant, okay, you can see they're first on the list here. BlackRock is basically the biggest hedge fund in the world, or I think it might be the, the biggest or the second biggest. Maybe Vanguard is slightly bigger. I'm not actually sure, but one of those two is the biggest. And the fact of the matter is, biggest hedge fund in the world, they have access to trillions of dollars uh, in, in, you know, well, I mean, their managed funds is trillions of dollars, right? So them uh, having a Bitcoin application approved would be huge, right? It would be open up the market massively to all those people who are uh, using BlackRock as a hedge fund. But overall, what I'm saying about them is the fact that they've, they've kind of applied for hundreds of ETFs in the past, and they've only ever had one ETF application denied. So these guys don't apply for applications that they think are going to get denied. BlackRock do not apply for applications they think they're going to get denied. That's another reason to believe that perhaps this Bitcoin application is more likely to be approved than perhaps uh, a lot of people thought, thought previously before this Grayscale lawsuit. So I think personally, we will be seeing some applications approved. Perhaps a couple of them will be rejected on certain uh, nuances, but I think you know we will be seeing approval of Bitcoin spot ETF applications in October. And I don't think... I don't believe at least, I might be wrong in saying this, but I don't believe that they can delay them any further. Uh, let me just read up here. No, they certainly can delay a few of them further. Uh, they have 240 days uh, from when they start reviewing these applications to approve or deny them. And the BlackRock application was only start, you know, begun to be reviewed uh, last month. So yeah, look, they, they certainly can deny them, uh, uh, delay them further. They can delay them 240 days, which means at the latest, they could, you know, delay this thing all the way, uh, let me think, seven months to March. They could delay it all the way back to March 2024 before making an actual decision on a few of them. Uh, but a few of these applications have been around for a lot longer, so perhaps they will be approved or denied earlier than March next year. So they can delay them again for sure. But overall, the next deadline is October, and that could be huge. The fact that we've seen such dramatically downside price action based on the delay means that when they finally do get approved, it will be dramatically upside price action or if the on the odd chance that they do get declined it will be dramatically downside price action again but right now the same rate and this is where we get into bitcoin ta the same ranges are still prevalent let's go to the weekly chart here and look at this chart this is the range bound chart on on bitcoin that everyone really should be watching uh the ranges are still very important uh 24.5k the bottom of the green box is still the major support to the downside as long as we're above that we have not entered a mac macro downtrend that's very important to note it may seem like we're in a downtrend but we're not actually in a downtrend yet we still have uh higher lows all right and higher highs yes the wick goes lower but wicks are not important when it comes to macro uptrends and macro downtrends technically speaking we're still in a macro uptrend uh although if we do lose 24.5k we do drop back below into this red range this would be a double top formation and that would be very threatening to the bitcoin structure unfortunately uh during this you know delay of applications here we have seen a lot of damage being done to the charts 
uh, it's really not good, okay? Yeah, look, there is hope in the future that we uh, go up once again based on those ETF, uh, the ETFs being approved. And yeah, look, the four-year cycle is still more than solid because the four-year cycle is based on date ranges. And hence, uh, unless we drop below the very low here of, of 15.4K, the four-year cycle is still intact. Yes, you know, the four-year cycle is intact and we do have hope in the future for ETF approval, etc. But right now, I mean, the damage that's been done is, is quite large. It's not really fully confirmed yet. We need to drop 24.5K for it to be confirmed. But obviously, you know, we've seen the monthly candle close. I think this is where we'll start the analysis. We've seen the monthly candle close and it's not good at all. I mean, the monthly candle close we saw just a couple of hours ago is, is really, really bad. Uh, unfortunately, we saw a drop below 29.3K, which is the red line support we needed to hold. We rejected from it, right? We went up above it. We flipped it for support. We were unable to hold. We dropped below it, seeing a, a very strong red candle. Uh, and that's not very good. Yeah, look, if you're looking at, if you're grasping at kind of straws here, yes, we are still holding the 50 EMA. And the 50 EMA is quite important in the monthly chart. We bounced off of it a couple of months ago before going upwards. We've kind of held it again. And that's at 24.5K. Again, that could support this green box. Uh, but overall, I mean, the close itself, right? Well, we saw a bad close. Close. We dropped below 29.3K. We not only dropped below 29.3K, but we demonstrated that we could get above a resistance, but we failed to hold the resistance that we got above, which is like almost even as bad as rejecting from it normally. Um, or, or more, you know, even worse than rejecting from it normally, to be honest, in terms of what it shows us. Uh, and we saw a bearish stochastic RSI monthly cross. I'm not too worried about stochastic RSI crosses on the monthly. If you're looking back to you know, something like 2016 to 2018, for basically a three-year period, we saw it cross back and forth, back and forth, and it led to uh, dramatically upside price action, even though the whole time we we're in oversold, uh, overbought territory. So it's not like the stochastic RSI is like the be all end all of Bitcoin analysis. It's really not. It's one of the most unreliable indicators, but it is an indicator uh, and it has cross bearish. And that's not good, obviously. Uh, and that bearish cross does line up with what we saw in the price chart. So not good close at all in the monthly chart. And, you know, on the monthly RSI, we have a trend here, as you can see, with Bitcoin crosses between the 14 moving average, the yellow line, and the Bitcoin RSI itself. When the moving average crosses under the RSI line, we see a bullish cross. It re uh, resonates in the chart and uh, results in big upside price action. The same happens to the downside when we see the RSI cross under the 14 moving average. And I've kind of marked this chart with red, green, and gray zones. Uh, the gray zones is when you see invalid stages. The red zones is when you see bearish crosses. And the green zones is when you see bullish crosses. Right now, we're still in a bullish cross zone. We haven't seen the bearish cross take place yet. If we're looking at the updated chart, you can see we're just above the 14 moving average. So we haven't seen a full confirmation of a bearish cross in the monthly RSI, which is good to see. Uh, perhaps we have bought ourselves, bought ourselves a little bit more time there. So that's good at least, but overall we have moved closer, closer towards a bearish cross, which is not ideal. But the main devastation as of right now, and it's not even confirmed yet, but realistically, this is the main thing I'm worried about, is the Bitcoin weekly chart. Uh, what we have here on the weekly chart is the bull market support band. You might have heard about this from Benjamin Cohen if you watch his channel, but I've been speaking about bull market support band since the first video I did on my channel in, I believe, June 2021. So it's not like a new topic for me. I talk about this all the time. Um, bull market support band is a support and resistant ba resistance band comprised of the 20-week SMA and the 21-week EMA. You can see just by looking at the price chart, if we're above this thing, for example, during this entire two or three year period, if we're above the two year period, I should say, if we're above this thing, we hold it for support, we go upwards, right? It's a very strong support band. It's also a very strong resistance band. We held it for resistance for the vast majority of this period here. And that's, you know, led to us to go downside massively in price action. When we finally went, went above it uh, in April, 2019, it led to a massive move to the upside. It's a very good industry, indicator of uh, kind of strength on long-term moves. Okay, again, throughout the, the bulk of the bull market move in 2021 and 2020, we held the bull market support band. When we finally got below it, that's when we started seeing some chop and resistance. And when we finally got uh, below it properly, that's when we saw the entire bear market, right? So it's a band that we hold if we're going upwards, we, we reject from if we're going downwards. Now, I have a glimmer of hope for this weekly chart. Now, I will say a lot of that hope has been lost, unfortunately, uh, you know, after these delays in applications. But look, you know, here's the thing, right? It's it's very unlikely now that we see a good close, but it is still possible. We have three days, 72 hours. 72 hours is a decent period of time. Um, what we, The reason why I say that, you know, it's possible we see a good close here is because, yeah, we've dropped below the bull market support band on two separate candle closes. That's bad, obviously. But I made the observation 
you know, for about a few days now, I've been making the observation that we could be copying what we saw here in March 2022, which is when we see a strong green candle, a bearish doji candle, and then a strong red candle. Now, if you flip that upside down, what is that formation? That formation is an evening star formation, okay? If you flip that upside down, we get a morning star formation. And that's exactly what we could be forming here, which is a strong red candle followed by a doji candle followed by a strong green candle. Now, unfortunately, with the delays in the ETF applications we've seen by the SEC, uh, the strong green candle, which we need to form that morning star is unlikely now. Uh, and unfortunately, what we've actually done TA wise is we've come right up to the bull market support band and we've like perfectly rejected from it. And that's not good at all. So we've certainly lost a lot of our hope on the weekly chart, but perhaps, you know, there is still a glimmer of hope. There is a chance that we come up and we close the weekly candle above 28.1K. It is a long shot for, you know, the next three days, 21, 28.1K. That's like almost a 10% move after the dramatic volatility we've seen in the last couple of days. I mean, it seems quite unlikely, but you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not over till the fat lady sings, as they say, and you know, it is possible, but overall closing again below that bull market support bet is really not a good sign because right now, the only glimmer of hope we have in the weekly chart is that we could be copying this region here to the reverse, in which case we go upwards. And if we lose that, then we've got no hope and we're just going to be below the bull market support band like usual. And that generally leads to downside price action. And, you know, if we do see that close below bull market support band on the weekly, which is probably the more likely scenario at this point, we are, again, going to be more likely to follow what we've got on the long-term Bitcoin chart. Throughout the entirety of 2023, we've been forming a head and shoulders pattern. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a little news flash for you. You trust exchanges with your money. They get hacked all the time. They lose funds all the time. So the exchange you're using, you're actually trusting with your money. You're also paying them fees for trades. You're paying up to thousands, tens of thousands of dollars per year in fees. So you want to have a bloody good exchange, right? And that's why I have two exchanges for you guys, two options, depending on your location, depending on what you want from exchange. The first one is BitGet. That is a KYC exchange. You can sign up from anywhere in the world, excluding the United States, excluding Canada, and excluding Singapore. Very low fees, protection fund, the whole nine yards. We've also got Bing X, that's our second exchange. And that is an exchange you can sign up non-KYC from anywhere in the world, including every country, right? With a VPN from anywhere in the world. Again, very low fees, protection fund, everything you need in exchange. Both of these exchanges are top 10 exchanges in trading volume. Sign up using my referral link below to get a 15% trading fee discount on both of the exchanges. Again, they'll both be in the description. Referral link is there. Get on a good exchange and become a proper trader. Don't use these trashy exchanges that you're risking your money and paying over in fees. Guys, let's get back into the video. On the logarithmic chart on Bitcoin, that has finally realized itself. That's finally resulted in a breakdown from the neckline. You can see that the, ne the neckline is valid based on how strong the red candle was on the breakdown. That's all you need really in confirmation. The neckline was valid. We have broken down from this head and shoulders pattern. If we take a measured move from the peak of the head to the retest vertically of the neckline and apply that to the breakdown zone, we can see that we're targeting basically down here at this pink uptrending line. If we zoom out to what this pink uptrending line is, it is a support line we've held since 2017 on Bitcoin. And that means we're basically targeting a retest you know, depending on where the retest is. But for example, if you target down here, we're targeting a retest of 23K, 22K, 21K, something like that. Low 20K is basically is what we're targeting based on this head and shoulders breakdown. I don't take measured moves on head and shoulders patterns on logarithmic charts or any patterns on logarithmic charts. I don't take the measured moves seriously because logarithmic charts tend to over-exaggerate the moves. That's why if I was actually taking it seriously, we'd be targeting 20K. But again, as I said, I don't take logarithmic charting pattern uh, measured moves seriously because they're exaggerated to the upside of downside. Uh, so I would say we're just targeting this pink line. And wherever we test that, again, 23, 21, 22, wherever it is, that's what we're targeting realistically based on this head and shoulders breakdown. And unfortunately, you know, based on what we've seen with these delays in applications, based on what we've seen with the monthly candle close, uh, being bearish and the weekly candle close potentially being bearish as well, that becomes very likely. Uh, now, this is a formation that I've been speaking about since we were up here at the 30K region. I didn't say it was the likely formation, but I certainly identified it. And the fact that we broke down from it, we were aware of that. We were able to uh, react to that situation. I said, because of this head and shoulders pattern that we shouldn't be buying in this region. And so realistically, uh, if you've listened to this channel, you shouldn't have any uh, Bitcoin position that you weren't prepared to hold for a very, very long term in this price region because I didn't recommend short-term buying there until we broke 32K. Um, but yeah, look, we're not in a good position on Bitcoin. We've, we've got this head and shoulders pattern that's, you know, anything 
but invalid. It's certainly valid at this point. We've got a uh, you know a death cross approaching on a daily chart as well between the 50 EMA, uh, 50 SMA, and the 200 SMA. We haven't seen a death cross on a daily chart since all the way back here. Uh, in January 2019. It's just not something we see very often. Uh, and we're coming in for it again, first time in basically, uh, you know, 18 months, over 18 months, you know, 19, 20 months. So 21 months, actually. So, you know, I can't sit here and tell you guys that Bitcoin's in a good position. It's not, you know, we've these delays in applications is not good. It's, it's opening the floodgate for the bearish move that Bitcoin was perhaps waiting for. But what I can say is this, I can say, that these ETFs are likely to be accepted at some point, in my personal opinion. And when that does occur, I think we will be seeing a very strong Bitcoin because of the fact that we've seen confirmation of what this ETF news can do to Bitcoin now. We've seen the 9% move to the upside in uh, six hours, not even based on approval, just based on the idea of an approval. We've seen the you know, 7% move to the downside in six hours based on the delay, not even the rejection. So I believe that, you know, when we see the approval or when we see the denial of these applications, it's going to lead to massive price action. And I believe they will be approved personally, or at least a few of them will. I right, well, look, here's the thing. Obviously, decisions like this are very, very heavily nuanced and manipulated. It's very hard to say what I believe. But I just believe based on the lawsuit we saw of Grayscale winning the lawsuit, basically, which was entirely dedicated to the idea that uh, the SEC unjustifiably denied the application. It doesn't really make sense for us to see a denial of at least a few of these, of, of, of really, you know, much of these applications at all. We should be seeing approval of a lot of them. Uh, so I believe that when we see these applications approved, we will be going upwards uh, on Bitcoin quite hugely. But it's just a matter of when that will occur, because as I said, you know, it could be as late as March 2024 of some of them, some of them a bit earlier, but it could be a while, you know, it doesn't have to happen in October. Right now, the deadline is October. They could just lay it again. Uh, so yeah, look, ETFs are big uh, and there's no, you know, make no mistake about that. ETFs are big and when they are approved or denied, it's going to lead to big price action. As of right now, though, we can't rely on news. We can never rely on news. We have to trust the charts and right now the charts don't look particularly good. We are technically still in a good range. We are technically still above 24.5K. When we lose that level, we'll be in really bearish territory. Right now, we've seen uh, indicators that, you know, perhaps indicate we're going to be losing that level. You know, we've seen monthly chart, not looking good. Weekly chart uh, in danger here. It's not closed yet, but it's in danger for sure. Three days into that close. Uh, and yeah, look, 24.5K is still a major support zone. It's still something we're holding. We held it on support in June. We held it on support. We're holding on support right now. We held it for resistance here on two occasions in 2023 and 2022. It's still major. It's not a support zone that you can just discount and say it's going to break for sure. But given what's happened recently, it certainly does Look, all you can say is it doesn't look good. We have to wait for the actual break itself to say anything else. But that's the Bitcoin update, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Check out the Crypto Academy Become a Trader 10 unit course. This will teach you how to trade. All the information is on the website. We've got the blurb, which you can read about, basically telling you what the course is. We've also got the unit topics on the website. You can read about exactly what we offer you in the course, including slides, videos, worksheets, trading diaries, and the actual unit names themselves. So you can get a good idea of what you're actually buying before you buy it. And if you have any further questions, you can email us here on cryptoacademycourse.gym.com and we'll get back to you. Again, check out the VIP group we mentioned at the start of this video. Check out BingX and the BitGet Exchange. We mentioned it in the middle of this video. All of those links are below. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers, guys.